on bits. Whatever you want. A nice shiny new beat on bits. Beat on bits a real winner. There's always room for beat on bits. Just gotta love beat on bits. Hey everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Beat on Bits podcast. This is a show where I talk about passions, projects, and playlists with some pretty cool people. My name is Brandon. I'm your host. I'm a software developer and a DJ. And this is my show where I just find some people who have some things that they like talking about and just share them with all you out there in the internets. And then I'll do a little bit of a mini DJ session at the end of the show with a few of their songs and a few of mine uh, to add to the fun. So without further ado, let's introduce today's guest. This is Roy. Say hi, Roy. Hi, how's it going? And he was born in Mexico, grew up in Salinas, California, and now works and lives in Palmdale, California as an aero engineer on airplanes, maybe aerospace one day. I don't know. I don't know how the terminology and everything works, but we'll learn today. So he's joining us to talk about a few things that he's passionate about, which include engineering, making videos and basketball and football. So without further ado, let's jump into it. So Roy, if you want to give us just a little bit of a, a brief intro in case I missed anything, and then maybe just choose one of these topics that you're passionate about to start us off with, and then we'll go from there. No, I think, uh, I think everything's, the intro is fine. Okay, perfect. <laughs> we can start with uh, engineering because I, so I think what I've dedicated my life to most. Nice. Okay. So how long have you been an engineer for now? Um, well, officially out of college for about one to five, one to six months. Okay. Awesome. So you're just like a fresh, a freshly minted engineer. How do you like it so far? Yeah. I, I like it. Um, but before that, I think, I, I think it counts as being an engineer too, because the workload that you get there and the projects that you get to work on really, uh, require a lot. Yeah. Uh, you can, I don't know if you can see my Tesla flag in the back. Yeah. 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 Oh, it looks yeah, like it's so got a lot of, internet, uh, I was an intern at Tesla for a total time about a year and a half. Nice. How was that? You got a lot of autographs. It looks like. Yeah, that's sort of, those are all the friends that I made. They're all really smart people. Um, I, I credit most of my technical ability and just engineering career to Tesla because if it wasn't for Tesla, I wouldn't have been appealing to a lot of companies and have, wouldn't have a lot of uh, interviews or offers. I bet. That must look and like credit, a golden yeah, ticket on your resume. Yeah, I credit my Tesla internship to my college. Yeah. Which college did you go to? Really, I went to Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. Okay. So we have a really good reputation for engineering here in California. Yeah. Uh, we're really hard to get into for, for engineering or almost for any major. And uh, they're known for their hands-on curriculum, which means that students are able to show up to the job and automatically pick up on things as quickly as possible. So uh, Tesla great. came to campus and they liked my resume. So they gave me a shot. It was really intimidating um, the first couple of weeks, maybe even like a month or two. But uh, as soon as I was able to pick up most of what I was supposed to do, I had an easy time. Well, awesome. Uh, easier time. Yeah, not as intimidating once you kind of got into the flow of things and stuff. Yeah. Cool. So what kind of, um, what sparked your interest in um, the field of engineering that you got into and how did that kind of tie into what you were doing in Tesla? So when I was like a lot younger, probably like seventh or eighth grade, uh, at the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Oh yeah. <laughs> started, to, started to kick off. So it, cu- it kicked off, I think, with uh, the Iron Man, the first Iron Man movie. Right, right, right. And just so, on top of that, just like watching Jimmy Neutron as a kid, watching Dexter's Laboratory, watching all these like cartoons. Awesome. Spider-Man, the amazing Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah. I noticed that there was like a trend with all these characters that I liked, Tony Stark, Iron Man, all these like really smart, cartoons or uh, fictional characters and they were all into some some, some type of engineering or yeah. science yeah that's true and so uh, i think what was the as a kid you know i thought what was the closest thing i can do to make me close to someone like peter parker or tony stark or an engineer and i thought engineering was the safest pet to be somewhat near their level and i unfortunately i made some really bad decisions and middle school and high school that made me have really bad grades. It wasn't because I wasn't, you know, intelligent or smart. It's just that uh, I was an illegal immigrant for most of my life. Mm. Well, not most of my life, but I'm still kind of young, but I was an illegal immigrant until I was like 15. 
And that was sort of discouraging because here in America, if you don't have your doc, like your paperwork, you can't really study or get scholarships or get a job afterwards. Yeah. So I didn't think there was a, I didn't think there was a point to anything. So oh. ended, ended up hanging out, hanging out with the wrong people. Uh, when I graduated high school, I wasn't eligible to apply to a lot of the colleges that I wanted to go to for engineering. Yeah. Like I always still had that dream in the back of my head. It, it just seemed impossible. Um, so fortunately I became a resident my parents paid a lot of money and got a lawyer to help that happen. Nice. Um, uh, yeah. And I went to community college, which is a junior college, um, for two years. I kicked butt. I got like almost straight A's in science oh, and engineering. Wow. I transferred to Cal Poly and like one year in, I, I get a call from Tesla and you know, it happens. Yo, that's so sick. That's such a great, like inspiration i think to anyone who's been through anything similar like that whether you whether not even if they're like fully legal and they just aren't doing well but you can just still push through the adversity and if they have any kind of problems like that it's like you're it's almost like you're a living example of what people can aspire to be if they're coming from not so uh favorable backgrounds and stuff like that so good job that's awesome yeah. thanks cool. so you got into tesla and then what was that experience like like I said, it was intimidating because they expect you to, they don't expect you to know a lot, but they expect you to be capable of learning at a quick pace. Right, right. Um, when I showed up and my manager told me about a bunch of projects, projects that I was going to work on, I was like, whoa, I don't think there's any way that I can make that happen or make that work. Yeah. But, you know, even though it, it was intimidating, the people at Tesla are not just really smart, they're also really, really friendly and really, really helpful. Nice. They're like everyone at Tesla wants you to succeed. Yeah. You know, there's no competition to be better than you or to get a promotion over you. Everyone is just really focused on making a great product, mm -hmm. and that's what I really loved about that company. Yeah. Uh, it was a, a huge learning experience. I made some great friends that I still keep in touch with today. Even though I, I left, I I still you know Tesla still has a really special place in my heart for sure. Yeah, definitely. I think that's a that's a common trend with a lot of. Um, of like those bigger successful like tech unicorn companies that are doing so well is that their work culture is really great for like promoting your own personal growth and teamwork and collaboration and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's really then, nice uh, to test I always that. had imposter syndrome there because I was like, why would they ever hire someone like me? You know, everyone here is super smart and I feel like they, they made a, an accident. They, they made a mistake when they hired me. But, you know, I, if, unfortunately I put in enough work to you know, make a good impression. Oh man, I, I I can so identify with the imposter syndrome thing too, especially like during school and right after school as well, because it's like... Yeah, you're a software developer, that sounds really interesting and difficult. Yeah, like especially in the software space too, there's a lot of that, like, I, I felt like that when I got my first job out, I'm like, oh crap, I don't know if I can do all this, everything's so different, they're depending on me for all this, what do they see in me that I don't kind of thing, but then, I don't know, I think once you just get over it and believe in yourself, it's, you do a lot better at work and just you feel better about yourself too but i think it's yeah. really natural to have that feeling at first because it's such a huge shift in like what you're used to right yeah yeah i know for sure that's awesome i think there's a lot of even though like i'm in software and you're in uh like aero and stuff just the whole engineering industry i think has a lot of commonalities like that and people some, I, I don't know what it is, but the people interviewing us have like some kind of keen sense that maybe we don't have or see in ourselves. And they're like, okay, this person will probably do well if we just like push them in this direction. And then, yeah, the, the environment and everything just helps us get there. So it's, it's really nice. I think engineering is a really good field, no matter which kind of branch you jump into. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I mean, if we're being completely honest, so uh, with engineering, I'm, I don't know, I'm not sure with software. But with engineering, especially my kind of engineering, which is mechanical slash manufacturing, yeah, slash industrial, yeah, I'm a, I have a pretty high, I have a pretty hybrid background. Um, you can get stuck in a really lame job where your company is making really boring stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I'm I've been lucky enough to have you know cool exciting jobs, but I, I've met friends and I've met people that completely hate what they do, and that's because they're stuck in an industry that is honestly pretty bland. Yeah. Uh, with software, I'm, I'm not sure how it is. I'm sure there's a difference between being a software developer for, say, Google versus a software developer for uh, 
a company that makes, I don't know, what's a boring software? Uh, well, I don't want to bash it too much because like what I'm doing at my current job is like what I want to mention. <laughs> That's kind of like not so glamorous, but it's basically like forms to collect data and then process the data and stuff, which is, yeah. it sounds so boring at first and it's boring to look at at first and use, but the kind of the backbone that you can have a lot of control over with the software is I find interesting. So you can just yeah. appreciate your own work that no one else really sees. And that I think that part is kind of more fun and exciting for myself. But when you explain to other people that it's like trying to keep their eyes open. <laughs> so, but yeah, I think if you can find something in your own role that you really like, then it really helps you feel better about what you do. And Yeah, that was probably one of my biggest fears coming out of engineering school is getting a job that I was going to hate. Yeah, yeah. It's it's really like going back a bit to when you mentioned like the Marvel Cinematic Universe and stuff. I found that really interesting because yeah. my other friend who is an electrical engineer, like same thing. He saw like read the Tony Stark story and like even before the movies came out and the comics and stuff. And he's like, man, I want to be an engineer and make my own like Iron Man suit. So I'm sure there's a <laughs> lot of a lot of kids who are being inspired by the whole like Marvel Universe to. Yeah. 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 I think it's great. I think it's great. Um. It's funny that there's another person out there that got inspired for the same reason. Yeah, and I just, I don't know, I have a feeling that there's a lot more out there who feel the same way. Whether they're in engineering or not, it's something, yeah. yeah. A thing that I like about the Marvel Universe, too, is, like, the characters are more, at least they kind of start more on your level. Whereas in DC, it's like, this person just, Batman just starts off with all this money. Yeah, he lost his parents and stuff, yeah, but he's a bajillionaire. And then you have people who are like Superman, who you could never hope to be. <laughs> yeah. So I like that about Marvel. It's more, the characters are more identified. Yeah, probably it. the most relatable character to me was always uh, Peter Parker. Yeah? And you know, just a broke college kid or broke high school student. Yeah, and that's that true. was a good story. Yeah. Spider-Man, I think, is my personal favorite as well, just because he's kind of nerdy. And uh, he's not the most invincible superhero, but he thinks of like really clever ways to use his own smaller tool sets to get stuff done, which is kind of nice. That's always yeah. fun and exciting. But yeah, so you're you're not at Tesla anymore, like just going back to the engineering thing. Uh, I don't know if, you don't have to say where you are, I don't know, confidentiality and stuff, but how, is it kind of in a similar uh, industry or is it something totally different now and how does it compare to what it's like uh, Tesla? Military, it's military aircraft. Oh, awesome. It's really, yeah. Uh, it is a bit confidential. Uh, yeah, you don't talk to... about what I my job, but uh, I made the switch. I mostly made the switch because, not because I'm more passionate about military aircraft than I am about Tesla products. It's because yeah. uh, I honestly was not happy in Silicon Valley. I didn't, I didn't find like I fit in in the culture very well. Oh, okay. Uh, what was it or like? The Bay Area in general. Or yeah. the Bay Area in general, I, I just wasn't happy and I wanted to try something new. I was always going, to, I was going to go as far as to leave California. I already had like some companies that I was talking to in Austin, Texas. Oh wow! In Dallas, Texas, in Dallas, Texas, because I was like, I'm fed up with this super high rent. Yeah. Uh, I'm not yeah. happy with the culture, and I'd never experienced Southern California before. I mean, okay. I grew up in Central California. Yeah. And then I did that year ish and a half at in the Bay Area. So I thought I'd give Southern California a try before I was serious about making an exit. Yeah. And I fell in love with Southern California, man. I don't want to leave California anymore. Nice. I think. Yeah, Southern California. It's I've never been to Northern California, but I went to Santa Monica for like a training thing at my first oh job. Oh my god. It was so nice. Like, why would anyone yeah. want to leave there? <laughs> yeah. So I was there last night, actually. I was there last night. Oh really? Yeah, it's, uh, I think I can say because I'm not there anymore, but I did some training with like Pivotal Labs in uh, their Santa Monica office, and they're like a consulting firm for a lot of different apps and websites and software related stuff. And it was, they had that kind of really nice, motivating, collaborative culture, like you described at Tesla with people wanting to help you and giving you a lot of stuff to do, but kind of like putting their faith in you that you have the ability to do it, which is really nice. Yeah. 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 So how long have you been living um, in down in Palmdale now and living that SoCal life? Uh, same, probably one to five months. Okay. Oh, so you just moved there specifically for the job? Yeah. I was uh, living in San Luis Obispo before that. 
Oh, That's where my college is. Right, right. So December, I finished college, got my degree, and now I moved over here. Awesome. And you're just all on your own over there? You got roommates or friends in the city or anything like that? Uh, I have a roommate. He's not here right now. He's still in Santa Monica. Okay. But nice. yeah, no, I have a couple of I mean, company right now because of the contract that I think Donald Trump signed. I don't know who signed the contract, but uh, there's a lot of hiring of young engineers. So it's not a difficult time to meet like new friends that are relatable with your age. Oh, nice. So you kind of, there's a big influx of people around the same like age and experience and stuff that are coming into the area to do similar work as you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's awesome. That can, you can like, uh, it's like a, you're part of the, the next wave to really make an impact on what you're working on. It's pretty fun and exciting. I think so. Yeah. Do you see yourself so. um, being there for the next few years at least, like something long term, or you want to move on to something else in the next year or two? You think? Uh, I'm not too sure yet. I mean, I just started, so I can't really. Yeah, I, that's for, so, so far, I enjoy the, the I enjoy the job. I enjoy the people that I work with. They're all super cool. Um, I don't know what I mean. One thing I do on the side, like I said, my second passion is video. Uh, right, is right. I do I do client work, even though in the short amount of time that I've been making videos, like I, I think I've gotten enough. Uh, far enough in skill with the editing and filming that people are intrigued by my work and they uh, want to make they, they want to bring me to their event so I can film it oh really whatever it is they want wow that that's really cool and you did you just start getting into the co the whole like video editing and and, and uh, the whole videography scene a few months ago or was that a long time ago kind of thing yes a few months ago and it's funny that you that I you say that because uh, you, you said list like how many passions did you tell me to list? Like three or four. Yeah, it was. Uh, uh, you use you, you uh, go back in time, and I wouldn't able to. I wouldn't be able to do that. I would just say engineering and sports because, and and even then, like they're they're passions, but I wouldn't say I 100% love them. And so before I started this job, when I graduated, I had like two months of break, which was a uh, part a big chunk of December and the entire month of January. Yeah. And what uh my mom told me to do she's like just go to hawaii or go somewhere nice for for break or take a nice vacation because I, I honestly haven't taken a like a solid break yet like even when i have days off i'm doing something that is uh beneficial towards my either engineering career or now even like video skills yeah like this weekend like i this weekend i could have like gone to who knows where and just relax and sleep and drink but you went to vidcon i, I went to vidcon and then i did that uh was it that helped out with that ad yeah Bel Air, Bel Air do, California do you want um, to uh, talk to us a little bit about so, that yeah, or so, what was that do you want to talk to us a little bit about like VidCon and the ad like right now or later on in the episode or anything like that or uh, I'll, I'll say I'll mention it I'll talk about it in a bit so okay, yeah, yeah. Sorry, that way it makes yeah. more sense how I got in the video yeah yeah so instead of taking a break those two months after college I, I decided to experiment on a hidden passion that I may not know about and uh, I've always been a big YouTube fan. You know, my bit, my favorite YouTuber is probably everyone's favorite YouTuber. It's Casey Neistat. Okay, yeah. And I have a Samsung Galaxy Note 8, right? So you got a decent right now, this isn't, right now, this isn't making any sense, but he makes a video titled, uh, Filmmaking is a Sport. Okay. And I click on it, and he's basically talking about how he went from nothing to how he is right now. And he pulls out at the end of the at the end of the video, towards the end of the video, he pulls out cell phone, the same exact cell phone that I own. Oh no way! And he basically he's like, uh, you don't need a fancy equipment to start a YouTube channel. There's a good camera in your pocket right now. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, there is a good camera in my pocket right now. So shoot, I'll give it a shot. Um, I didn't know exactly what to make a video about, so I, I decided to do something that I'm familiar with, which is my hometown, Salinas. And I, I, there's a really high crime rate, uh, and a lot of people complain about the city, and a lot of people hate it. So I thought, what if I do something different, where I go and interview people and see if they have like a positive outlook on the city, hmm. and make it sort of, at least at the time, the skills that I had, make it somewhat cinematic. And it had, it had a great reception; like it got like forty thousand views on Facebook. Wow. And uh, it went, it, it got my channel from like zero to sixty subs. Nice. So it really inspired me to like keep going with that, you know. And even though I haven't had the same type of success with the stuff that I've made after that, uh, 
I still like it. I still I enjoy the whole process from filming to editing. It's just great. That's the awesome. tech aspect too is awesome. I love the tech aspect. Yeah, there's so much you can do so and can... so much you can try out. Yeah. Yeah, and you're that that's actually that's such a cool uh topic, especially for like your very first video to kind of get that uh hit inside of your of your hometown kind of thing. What what gave you the idea to do that? Well, like I said, like there's a lot of hate towards my hometown. A lot of people hate where they live and they bash it all the time and there's all this negativity and negative energy on my city. So I thought, why don't I make something that it can totally show a different side of this town? Yeah. Something that'll go against the stereotypes. And I did. I went around and I interviewed, I think, uh, a little over 60 people Wow. in my town. And How long did it take you? For the most... Huh? How long did that take you? It was it was a pretty long it was a pretty long because I mean you're not gonna find sixty people right away yeah and not everyone's gonna be eager to be on camera and be on video yeah 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 so I get to, I got turned down a lot I, I got turned down a lot and rejected whenever I would ask someone if they wanted to be on my video sometimes they wouldn't even ask what it was about they were just like straight up no yeah um, which is fine I understand that people are camera shy but luckily I was able to get sixty to say yes and they all had for the most part a po positive opinion on the town. And it's it's not a small town. I think it has about like three hundred thousand residents. Oh, okay. And and it's funny because it still feels like a small town because a lot of people were like, "Hey, I know that person," or "I know that person," and yeah, they yeah. just started tagging each other, and it slowly started getting that you know traction. It's blowing up, yeah. Getting shared a lot. And my favorite part about the whole thing was the comment section. Yeah. So uh, it was like, wow, everyone hates this town, but you made it look so cool and you made it look so friendly and awesome. I, I mean, unfortunately, there's still a lot of crime that didn't change anything, but yeah. the fact that I was able to give some people hope was was great. Yeah, that's just a small difference, but it's such a like significant, like feeling and like that whole just atmosphere you can provide to someone for a brief moment in time, feel like their city is the shit for a second, and that's that's so cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe the next video will will kill, bring down the crime rate a little bit. We'll see. <laughs> well, yeah, that that's that's so like I don't know, just perfect that you mentioned like the motivation behind it and everything, and just how you thought of that. That's in a way kind of what I'm trying to do with my channel is interview just people from all different backgrounds and stuff, so that people don't stick to their prejudice about someone or someone with, with a certain belief or someone with certain backgrounds, and just see that like. Everyone has things that they're passionate about, and everyone's listening to music that they love, and they're working on things to make a difference in some aspect. So, I think I really identify with kind of your vision behind that first video that you made. Yeah. So, so I definitely fell in love with the whole process. Like, yeah. there's nothing I hate about it. I like filming. I like editing. I like posting online, and you know, hopefully, my content makes people laugh or motivates them. You know. Yeah. Uh, I definitely don't try to make because there's certain things uh, there's certain people that can get away with daily vlogging like normal just go about their lives and just show what they do yeah but because I'm just starting off and I don't really have that sort of presence online I don't think anyone cares so I try to make my videos sort of like not just funny but also a form of infotainment yeah or even though it feels like I'm vlogging I'm still like feeding you some sort of information right well, that's yeah. really good how's that been going so far have you like are there are there like a few specific videos that are getting a lot of traction? Yeah, so my Salinas video is probably my second best to my dog, dog video that I made, which is the last one I made to celebrate 100 subscribers. I went to Long Beach and I pet 100 dogs. Yeah, I was watching that one. That was really cute. <laughs> That's such a it's good concept, a, too. It's a, yeah, it's a, it's a dog beach. So I didn't share it on Instagram, but somebody found my video and they shared it on Instagram. And it oh, got nice. 100 and I think they're close to 130,000 views now. On Instagram? Wow. Whoa, that's crazy. Yeah. And my channel views also went up pretty high. And one thing I realized after that video, after celebrating 100 subscribers, was that people subscribe for different reasons. <laughs> yeah. So you got, true. like, the vast majority of the people that subscribed was because of the Salinas video. Yeah. So these are people that are expecting content on Salinas, my hometown. But oh, unfortunately, yeah. I don't live there anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then a few other people subscribed because of my spring break video. I go to Mexico and I have a really good time. I meet, some, I meet a girl... Um, not a girlfriend, just like the random fling. Uh, okay. And I, they subscribe for that because they were expecting party content. Oh, yeah. So I've been experimenting a lot. And then 
there's a few like couple like five to ten subscribers I got from the dog video. Yeah. Now I think they're expecting dog videos. Yeah, that's so. <laughs> the challenge with like such a wide range well, of videos. So right? I've taken, I've taken a, yeah, I've taken a step back and I haven't uploaded in like two weeks now. Okay. Um, just to really, really try to figure out. I know I'm not gonna figure it out just by taking this break. Like I'm gonna try to figure out a niche right now, stick with it for some time, see if it works or not, and then try to do something again because I'm not, I don't want to confuse my subscribers. Yeah. But uh, I've had, I've had fun with it, you know. Like even the dog video, like it was it was great to read some of the comments on Instagram, just like oh this is goals. People tagging their boyfriend and girlfriend like we should do this on a date. And oh, I was like, this is awesome. So that's, what, that's the thing I love about this video thing is you can reach people and hit, hit their emotions in different ways. Yeah, give them ideas and inspire them. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. And the, I think one thing about that video that made it kind of next level was it was it really felt really cinematic and stuff too with kind of like the cuts of you longboarding around and just like getting a drink in between and stuff and with the music and everything. It wasn't just a straight up, I'm going to go around and pet some dogs. It's like... Yeah, you put a lot of thought into kind of the editing and stuff, and you can really tell it was really well done. Yeah, thank you. So, like, the you, you said that people, like, reached out to you to kind of film their events and stuff and edit videos for them as well? Yeah, so that's mostly in my hometown, because in my hometown, I got that traction with that video. Oh, okay. So it's funny, you mentioned longboarding, because I was longboarding downtown, and this lady uh, saw my video, and she said that it made her cry. Oh, no way. She's like, hey... Yeah, she's like, hey, uh, you're from that video. Uh, do you want to uh, help me make something? I know you can fly your drone. Can you give me like 30 seconds of footage of this vineyard and lettuce fields and uh, I'll pay you something. And at the time, I never got paid for videos. I just was doing it for fun. This wasn't too long ago. I think it was about a, about a month ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I said, sure. I, I was happy with like $10, $5 for this footage. Because right? yeah. I don't know. I'm honestly very clueless about how much money you can make on this. Yeah, and, and if you've so, never done it before, you don't know what to ask for or anything too, right? Yeah. So I go and get that 30 seconds of footage for her, and I come back, and it was super easy. Like, she didn't want any special, like, uh, movement with the drone. She just wanted, right. like, a straight shot flying the drone over the vineyard. Oh. Super easy. I come back, and I got paid $70 for 30 seconds of footage. Yo, that's good. How long did it take you to kind of good. get everything set up? I don't know if that's good though? or bad. Huh? How long did it take you to kind of get everything set up and ship it off? Oh, it's it's super easy. I have like the latest and greatest. I have the Mavic Air. Okay. It's a foldable drone. It's really tiny. It's one click of a button and you're up in the air. Oh, nice. So you basically got paid seventy bucks to just hit a button. And it's four K video too, so it's not like um, she's getting bad quality. Yeah. Good quality. That's pretty good. Yeah, it's it's always like an extra motivator if you can if someone's willing to pay you for doing something that you're already passionate about and something that you just comes naturally yeah. and you enjoy doing. And then, uh, somebody wanted me to help them with their, I think taco business or restaurant. Yeah. I haven't gone around to that yet because I'm living to this anymore. It's sort of difficult to go all the way back there for work, even though my parents are there. So it's still like an incentive to go home. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then I think I'm helping someone film their grandfather's 90th birthday party. Wow. And here in here in Palmdale, I got one gig, and that's from announcing myself on this Facebook group for this this area. Nice. Uh, it's funny because this lady didn't want any filming; she just wanted me to edit for her. Oh, and she okay. said that she already had all the footage and all the content ready. Yeah. So I show up to her house, and she has like over three hours of three hours of just recorded voice, video, and pictures. Yeah. About her husband just cheating on her. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> so you're yeah, like was, are you helping like a private investigator or something I've ever done. and it's funny because she didn't want to story tell I was very concerned about the randomness of everything yeah right because it was like voice voice recordings it was a random video of like I don't know him doing I don't know what the hell he was doing I didn't want to click on the videos I just drag and dropped him onto Adobe Premiere yeah and she didn't want any sort of form any form of storytelling she didn't want to give like a brief summary of what everything was about She's just like, drag and drop everything. Give me one file so I can send it off to everyone. This lady does not know how the computer works. No. So she, she didn't understand that it was a huge file. She wasn't going to be able to share that through email. Yeah. So one thing that I was able to do for her, I said, I'll, I'll, I can make you this huge video. It's like, I think it was like three and a half hours long. Oh, my God. I don't know who would. Yeah, I, I think this was, she said it was primarily for family and friends that know this guy. Okay. So I could kind of see how like. It could be appealing. But even then, I don't know who I would care about so much that I want to see three hours of content from them. Exactly. 
Uh-huh. And I, I did this for her. I put it in a flash drive, and I uploaded it to YouTube as unlisted. Right, right. Right, so no one can see it unless they give the link. Yeah. So it made her life a lot easier because all she has to do now is share that link. Yeah. I don't understand why she wanted to send it via email to I don't know how many people when she could just quickly text that link to someone. Yeah. She was really happy about that, but that was the most random gig and most awkward editing I've done in my life. Oh, wow. So far. So you got like really in the in the meat of somebody else's relationship by by a video. Yeah, well, I was I was curious because she said that she didn't want any filming, she didn't want any uh, special effects. Yeah. So I was like, what does she want then? I show up and she said that she had everything ready to go and she just needs to like make it into one thing. Hmm. So it was easy to just drag and drop and click, uh, you know, just what what was it called? Export and. Yeah create the file for her. Wow. That's like, okay. So I I think we're missing a connection in the story. You you just introduced yourself on a Facebook group for your local area, and then en- you yeah. ended up at this lady's house who wanted the stuff done. So she just saw that you were a video editor or YouTuber and just decided, hey, let's ask this guy to compile stuff about my husband well, cheating I, on me. Well, yeah. And then I, she, she, she contacted me, and I told her to check out my, my Facebook uh page because I, I still post my stuff there yeah. I, I treat my Facebook like my YouTube account okay you're not gonna find me sharing memes you're not gonna find me sharing pictures I'm strictly uploading video to my Facebook okay and she goes to my Facebook and she's like well that's really cool but I don't need anything like that oh okay and I was like okay cool all right <laughs> I, I'm assuming there's a lot of people that do video editing here in my area even though I am close to LA yeah um here is, is isn't uh what is a creative a very creative space I guess, uh, I guess, Palmdale is known yeah. for Palmdale is known for uh, the aircraft and military industry. Oh, okay, okay. I guess it makes sense because if anyone was uh, more into the video industry, they'd probably just go to LA if it's not too far. So I guess yeah. you got a bit of a bit of a monopoly there. That's that's so interesting. <laughs> I would have never thought someone who just started making YouTube videos would even be offered anything like that. <laughs> So I guess this is a, another live example of where YouTubing can take you on your never-ending winding journey to wherever you're going with it. So where else yeah. did you... Um, it sounds like you got a kind of um, uh, some more, I guess... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? M- more normal, for lack of a better word, opportunities uh, as a result of your YouTube stuff, like going to VidCon and uh, getting offered a speaking role in a commercial... Do you want to tell us a bit about that? Yeah, so uh, I'm part of this academy called the Jump Cut Academy. And I, I bought it the same time I started my channel. Uh, they basically teach you how to make or how to craft a good video, you know, that's watchable and shareable. Yeah. Um, one thing they don't teach you is how to edit and how to actually use uh, software to make your video is captivating and good because uh, I noticed no offense to some of the students in Jump Cut, but some students don't know how to really work editing software. Oh. Uh, and I think, I think editing is a huge part of it. Yeah. Uh, you, take, you take my dog video, you take away the music, you take away the the cuts. Yeah. And it, it'll be boring and nobody's going to watch that. Yeah. But, but no, but it's super, it's a super cool academy. And I think one huge advantage that I have over a lot of people that are in it is that I'm close to LA. Mm-hmm. So whenever you know the jump cut staff has anything to offer its students, I can always say, "Yeah, I can be there. I can be there uh, to help out." Nice. And they were making they're making this ad for this like secret new class that they're making. Yeah. I, I don't even know what it's about. Like I just showed up. I did my role. I only had one line, but I was the only person that had one line that's non jump cut. Nice. Which is cool. Yeah. I got to just hang out and party. And in a Bel Air mansion. <laughs> oh, that's so sick. Just kidding. And a video is coming on that too soon. I'm, I'm making a really cinematic sort of a one to two minute video on the, the mansion using my DJI equipment, my gimbal, and my drone. Nice. So it should be pretty cool. So it sounds like you've uh, you're you didn't just start making videos randomly with nothing. You you decided to like get really interested in it and invested in some like jump cuts. Uh, like learning materials, some actual like hardware and stuff. So you 
It sounds like you decided to take it seriously, like from the get go, instead of just starting to film on. Yes. Yeah. I did. I did. The reason. And the reason I did was because uh, I knew I, I had it for some people. I had a gut feeling or instinct that I was going to enjoy it. Yeah. Now I've been a YouTube fan for so long. If you look at my account, like yeah, I've only been uploading videos for about what three to four months now, but um, I've been. A, I have my YouTube account since 2008. Wow. So I was there for like Ray William Johnson. I was there for Smosh TV in yeah, like yeah. the earlier days. And it was so cool just to see someone that isn't famous try to be famous and become famous. Yeah. And yeah, the way that uh, fame, I think, is democratized now is, is pretty great. If you make good stuff, people are going to want to watch. Totally. Regardless of whether or not you're like tied to the Kardashians or someone, you know, influential. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's really inspiring. I think it's so you you just had this feeling to just go forward and look up all the latest and greatest stuff and all the techniques and everything and then just kind of put it all together and just improve yourself video after video. Do you, are you noticing like a huge difference in your earlier videos versus now, even though there's only like a few months apart? Absolutely. Number one is the audio. Number two is the editing and just sort of the angles that I would do with the camera when I'm trying to do anything cinematic. Yeah. Uh, my drone my, my drone piloting skills have improved a lot, too. Nice. Uh, crashed it. It comes from crashing it a few times. Oh. <laughs> it's fun. No, I, I've seen a huge improvement. I might, if you look at my very first video, which is my Selena's video, you'll notice that my personality is very laid back and mellow. Yeah. And that's because I was really shy in front of the camera. And as you, and as you click on my progression, you notice that I'm way more outgoing and more myself. Still not 100% myself because I'm still somewhat camera shy. But my most recent, the dog video, my personality is a little more like shown off. When that's I'm going great. to get the monster, when I'm having a good time drinking it and just hanging out, like that's me 100%. And then you go to my Selena's video where I'm like a little more frozen up, a little more shy. Yeah. Like, hey guys, I'm making a video on Selena, so I hope you guys like it. And if you don't, let me know. You yeah. Know? It's it's so it's so like I don't even know what the right word is, but it's just really cool to see, like look back on your own videos and see how you changed throughout your videos. Even though you feel like you're the same person, but it's like that's what other people see too. Is what the what you recorded. It's like you're they yeah. can tell when you're not comfortable and when you're feeling more of yourself and letting other people see that. It's really cool to kind of get that experience too. Yeah. Yeah. So. So that's uh, the video uh, video making and, and creating topic that we talked to. And we're, we've got like a few minutes left before I even get into like the music part. So if you want to touch on a bit of like what you're passionate about with, the, with respect to uh, basketball and football before we jump into that part. Yeah, so because I was a really bad kid in high school, I wasn't really eligible to do any sports. I was still a f sports fan. Yeah. So one of the biggest regrets I'll ever, I always had in my life is not being able to, you know, try out because I just was a bad egg. Uh, but I, I take a lot of inspiration from sports stories. My favorite team is New England Patriots. And people are always like, why is it the Patriots? They're not a California team. And they, they, I, I explain this because of the Tom Brady story. Growing up watching Tom Brady dominate all the time, but also knowing where he started is very inspiring to me. Um, he was a he was a six round pick in the NFL draft, uh, pick 199, and he's now a five time Super Bowl champion. You know, yeah. like people overlooked him a lot, and but you know the fact that he cried when he almost didn't get picked is like, you know, this is Tom Brady crying. This is someone that's freaking great now. Yeah, stories like that, stories like that in sports really inspire me. That's a very good point too. And, yeah, so. It, Almost the entire New England Patriots team. Well, not the entire New England Patriots, New England Patriots team, but a good. Some of my favorite players from that team have similar backgrounds, where they were overlooked, they didn't get picked when they wanted. Teams didn't think they were good, and they show up to the Patriots and they just play very well. Um, there's awesome. a funny inside joke, not even inside joke. It's a meme that Bill Belichick can pick up like a janitor from uh, McDonald's, and he'll be a really good receiver just because. <laughs> He's known for getting no name, pe no name people, and making them really good. Wow! So just finding yeah. the most coachable people with the most potential and launching them—that's awesome. I think yeah. even um, 
And it's also fun to watch. Yeah. It, it was... I mean, from time I'll play, yeah, time sorry, I'll play like pickup games with friends here and there, but nothing serious, you know, nothing like competitive. Uh, that's one, like I said, one of my bigger regrets is uh, not being able to do that when I was younger. So just kind of, you've always been following the actual leagues on TV and stuff, and then just play yourself for fun kind of thing with uh, basketball and football? Yeah. Okay. Did you, were you able to play much in, um, in university or anything like that? No, engineering consumed uh, my time. Yeah, I guess that's true. You don't really get a lot of free time to do anything. No. Really. <laughs> no, when I wasn't when I wasn't doing anything towards my engineering career, I was either partying or sleeping. <laughs> yeah, that's. If I'm being honest, if I'm being honest. Yeah. How about now, though? Are you trying to play more now, or just? Um, no, right now I'm just more into general fitness. I'll just like do weights when I can. I'll go run. Yeah. It's funny because like I'm so I'm so into this new video thing that I actually have like my weight set back here because I know that if I don't have any sort of like lifting equipment in my room, I'm probably not gonna go to the gym just because I want to be with my laptop. Yeah, nice YouTube. Next to it all the time so I can You're edit. Official. <laughs> yeah, because even though I haven't been uploading in the last two weeks, it doesn't mean I haven't been practicing filming or editing. I have. Oh wow. Like, yeah. Um, so it may seem like I'm lazy and people were like, hey, he hasn't uploaded, he's, uh, he's falling off. No, I've been filming still, I've been practicing. I, I just don't, like I said, I don't want to keep on confusing my subscribers. Yeah. If I, upload a, if I upload a video about cats this time and everyone's like, oh, what, cats suck, I was here for the dogs. Yeah, you unsub, know? yeah. That, I guess that's the challenge, but I think it's going to be really exciting to watch what you come up with next and how you kind of find what that niche is going to be and who to serve basically as like the main viewership because I think yeah like regardless of what kind of video and stuff you make you got like the editing techniques that can go into all of them right I hope so yeah that'll be awesome uh, I'm excited for that so we're we're getting close to the end of my typical interview length so maybe we'll just jump to the the music and okay uh, you picked well four songs today because I asked for an additional one in case I couldn't find the third but you have three Childish Gambino tracks, those being Life of the <laughs> Biggest Troll, Stance Hall, Life. yeah, and Saturday, and uh, The Glory by Kanye West. So what can you tell us about what you like about these artists, these tracks, and um, just how, how, this, how this playlist is good for you? Well, I like Life the Biggest Troll because it goes super deep into how people use the internet now to just showcase their lives and you know you make a mistake it's on the internet forever and people are going to remember you for that you know yeah and it's really easy to relate to because you know i'm a young kid i grew up with the internet and it's just it's a really deep song it's hard for me to explain the feelings that i get when i listen to it i just know that it's my favorite really good lyricism uh, just chorus is great and it it just hits me because you know, I grew up using the internet and I can relate to a lot of what the lyrics say. Awesome. How about Stand Tall by Childish Gambino? Stand Tall I listen to whenever I just feel like crap because you know it's hard to stay motivated sometimes when you go and see someone's content just you blow up almost what feels like overnight. Yeah. And you, I'm putting in all this work and I'm like, man, you know, like I think I can do better than that. And he, he did it in like one day. Or she did it in one day, and yeah. I listen. I like to listen to "Stand Tall" because it's very motivational. It's like, keep on your dreams, keep standing tall. Nice. Super cheesy, but I don't know. It just keeps me keeps me happy. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you just need like a few words to push you forward. That's awesome. Yeah. So that's why that's why I think Childish Gambino is my favorite artist because no matter what mood I'm in, there's always something. There's always a song that he has that I can vibe with. Yeah, that's true. He's he's got such a broad range as an artist too. I feel like. And then you also chose uh, a new one called Saturday. What can you tell us about that one? Yeah. So that one's not out yet officially. It's only he's only uh, sang it live in Saturday Night Live show. Uh, it's funny Saturday Night Live. The song's called Saturday. Yeah, lines up perfectly. Uh, it's basically about how it's very groovy. It's very Michael Jackson type feel. Uh, it's very danceable. It's basically about how you're as stuck at a nine to five job that you hate. I'm, I'm not. I'm just saying like it's. That's what the song's about, yeah. If you're stuck in a 9-to-5 job that you hate, 
and you're always just looking forward to the weekend. And even though I'm not in a job that I hate, I still look forward to the weekend for sure because that's the time that I have to edit the most and film the most. Yeah. So this this song came out, I was like, yeah, I always look forward to Saturday because it's like Saturday, you know? Yeah, for sure. And then, so it's just about looking forward to Saturday, which a lot of people can identify with regardless of how much they like or dislike their job. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure a lot of people will identify with the song too. Okay, awesome. And, uh, well, let's talk about The Glory too, just just in case I can't include Saturday in my mix. So you got The Glory by Kanye West. What do you like about that yeah. one? What do I like about that one? Yeah. It's always, yeah, like most of these songs, I think, as you can tell, like I, I want to be able to relate to them. It's kind of hard to relate to Kanye West when he's done everything that he has. <laughs> yeah. But what? But one thing about the glory is the song that he samples in that is called I think uh, I forget the name of the song. But the song that he samples in that is really cool. It's also very it's it's religious, and I'm not religious, but I, it's very motivational because it's basically just trying to like go through a bunch of crap before you can find the glory or mm. you know success. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, so it sounds like a lot of these are kind of. Like you in music, it seems like you look for stuff that you can relate to on like a lyrical level and this with the yeah. story it's telling and stuff. Yeah, I wish I knew the name the name of the song that he sampled at the top of my head. I know that I listen to it a lot. Yeah. Oh, save the people, save the country. Oh, okay, okay. The song is called Save the Country, and it, it's uh it's pretty cool. I liked it. Nice. I like I like the Glory by Kanye West too, but I I like the song that he sampled more. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. So. That was the, uh, we're coming to the end now, so I'll just wrap it up real quick. And you just watched another episode of the Beat Up It's podcast with Roy Garcia today. We learned about his fun and exciting passions, projects, and playlists. If people want to find you on social media, how can they do that? Everything on my social media is Roy Boy Polly. Roy Boy Polly. Where does that name come from? Well, my name is Roy. I'm a boy, and I graduated from Cal Poly. Okay. That's a very succinct explanation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Okay, so Roy Garcia on all social media. There's like a bajillion Roy Garcias, so I, I wasn't gonna leave my name on my social media stuff as Roy Garcia because you'll just I get mean, lost. so many of them. Yeah. So I was like, what's something that's unique to me? I mean, being a guy isn't exactly unique, but you know, being from Cal Poly, I think is pretty unique. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. It's it's easy to say too, easy to remember. Roy Boy Polly on any of your social medias to find him. And uh, what else do we got? If you want to find me, if for whatever, even though I didn't say too much, you can find me on all social medias at Beat on Bits. And uh, yeah, if you're listening to the podcast, just listen for a minute or so, and the nice new mix will start. If you're watching on YouTube, I don't know if I'll be able to put the video up because of copyright stuff, but I'll link to the audio in the description either way. So sit tight for that. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And uh, we'll see you next time. Say bye, Roy. See ya. See ya.